Tip Friday here at beadshop.com. Um, there we go. I can see all of our streams coming up. So I'm sorry if you were on and didn't see the streams everywhere last time, but I think I am on this time. Let me just make sure that I can see everybody here, that I've got everybody jumping on, and I think I can see you here on our website. There we go. I just got the notification that we are live. There's Janice. There's everybody. Alrighty. It's great to have everybody here. I'm turning on all of my screens, so bear with me. I can see our, our um, YouTube feed. There we go. I can see that. I can see you guys over here on the Facebook, so I think I've got everybody. It's great to have everybody here. All right, happy Friday, everyone. Yes, we made it through another week. Uh, for those of you who celebrate, it's Easter week uh, here uh, this week, so I know that a lot of you are getting ready to uh, have family over and stuff like that. That's always a fun kind of family time, I think, together. I, I don't know what you guys are cooking. I think I'm cooking lamb, I think. I don't know what you guys are gonna do. But I think lamb would be a good Easter dinner. Uh, my dad, oh, my mom jumped on. Speaking of lamb, my dad, king of the lamb, a great one. Sometimes we have ham too. Just making this chit chat till I get all of these up and running. So, oh, it's great. It's great to have everybody here. There we go. There we go. And I can see everybody's. I'm going to need, I think I'm going to need like more big screens that I mount on this wall so I can see everybody. Maureen, you can see, um, yep, it's on there. Janice, the YouTube, yep. Janice is saying she didn't see me live, but I'm checking it. I can see it. I can see them all here. Great. And Maureen, you said you bought yourself a metalworking apron. That's awesome. Every good metal worker needs one. That is for sure. There we go. I can see all of you guys there. Okay. And I see that some of you are having ham. Yes, and at Passover's this week too. I think so many busy things. So many family holidays or chosen family holidays, whatever works for you, right? Well, there we go. I think I've got all the screens up and running. All right. Well, I hope that everyone had a fantastic week and that you really enjoyed our project from um, Facebook Live this week. I wanted to go over uh, some of the, we've had like so many, I don't know, new projects, new products, all kinds of stuff happening here at beadshop.com. So I thought that this Friday would be a great free tip Friday to review some of the new things we've had. And there was a really interesting comment that was posted in our group um, over on Facebook, our bead shop, um, bead table community. Um, and uh, there was a question, I'm sorry, I can't remember who asked it, but somebody who asked, asked about creativity and, you know, cause I'm always posting um, all kinds of, you know, what I'm doing and what I'm making and that kind of thing. And so the question was, uh, how do you guys stay so creative and stay so, I don't know, keep moving forward with projects and stuff. And, you know, Janice, she really is, uh, one of the most creative people I know. And I do have a lot of creativity. I, um, you know, I kind of jump in and, uh, I don't know, kind of get it going, right? And just, I don't know, create it, creativity, cre creativity, I guess is the right, it is my life, right? It is what I do. So I thought, I would share a couple of tips with you. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you guys can see what I see. And then 
we're just going to jump in and talk about um, all of the uh, stuff I've got on my table in front of me. All right, so Gita is over on Facebook. I can see her over here. Janice is over here on YouTube. So let's get started. I'm going to move this camera around. So let's do it. Turn it. And I'm always, I'm on my own on Fridays, so you have to uh, forgive my, but look at that was pretty smooth, right? Wasn't that smooth? I thought that looked pretty good. You guys are getting a peek of that new design team lookbook as well, right? Let me fix this up. We're going to talk about that also. That's something that's new. And here's some of our new beads as well. There we go. That looks pretty good if I do say so myself. And I think I'm going to just turn up the brightness here. I think that should make things a little brighter, maybe. I'm going to do this one right here too, and let's see. That looks a little bit better, don't you think? Okay. All right. So, oh yes, the twist beads. The twist beads are here. I love them. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the creativity, okay? Because that kind of ties in I know, look at my table. I didn't present anything nicely today, right? It's just, <laughs> it's just a mess. That's all it is, right? Just a mess. But um, I want to bring this to the fore and show you guys. Now, some of our design team is watching. It's a little crooked. There we go. That's straight. Some of our wonderful design team is watching. I know I just saw Faye on here. But our wonderful bead shop design team, which is comprised of, we've got our Faye, we've got Kim, we've got Danielle, and we've got headed up by our wonderful Ali Mori. Um, and this was a project, um, you know, I just kind of, on a whim, uh, just to kind of get their design muscle starting to flex, just on a whim, I uh, jumped in and sent everybody a kit. Now, when Janice and I, we taught last year at Beat and Button, and we taught our uh, really fantastic, I'll pull this over here, um, it's these guys here, our color study project that Janice and I taught at Bead and Button. And we had a few uh, kits left. And so I sent to the team, uh, two of our design team got the color study project in Garden Path, Kim and Faye did. And Danielle and Allie worked on Meadowland, which I think is the, is the, let me make sure that's right. Yes, Garden Path is, was the greens and Meadowland was the blues. And it was a really fun class that Janice and I did. We had a great time at uh, Beat and Button. But we had some, um, some uh, of the kits left over. So I thought it would be kind of fun if the design team got the kit and then did things that were beyond the kit or different than the kit. And so here is the uh, garden path one that I have here. And here's the Meadowland one that I have over here that we did. And these were the samples, like I said, from Beat and Button. And so, you know, talking about creativity, and I don't know, Kim, I just saw you jump on, and Danielle, I mean, um, Faye, I know you're here. And if Allie, you and Danielle are here, or if anyone wants to jump in about their creative process. But I thought it would be cool to kind of track and see these very specific items that came that were being used in a very specific way for this really specific project to see what the design team would do. And so you can go to our homepage at beadshop.com and download your own copy. It comes in a PDF, so you can put it on your e-reader or you can print it. I know some of you guys like to print, okay, uh, and have yours in a book. Um, Allie, of course, put this wonderful lookbook together, and if you are looking at it as a PDF, everything is linked, so you can just 
click and link and go to the projects. But as we said, one bracelet kit, two colorways, four designers. And so let's take a look. We've got Faye's here first, and I'm gonna get in kind of tight here. And so Faye got the Garden Path um, colorway from the, uh, the Garden Path kit. And what I love that Faye did right away, okay, is she jumped in and did, it's really her signature, is really this West County Cuff, which I love. And what Faye wrote was, while I was creating this piece, my thoughts turned to the Art Deco period and the volume of gorgeous jewelry, objects of art, architecture, couture, etc. that came from that era. I think the shape and colors of the tiles influenced her. And it definitely has a um, Art Deco feel to it. And I'll jump in kind of tight to that so you guys can see it. Okay. I know you guys, that cuff, it is so gorgeous. And um, Brittany is going to come and do West County Cuff with us on a Facebook Live. She said she would. So I'm really excited that she will be with us to do it. And what I love about Faye's piece that she did here was she took these elements, because the way it came in a kit, it was all kind of, not jumbled, but it was all together, kind of, in, you know, all the beads kind of jumbled up. And so Faye kind of started to, you know, um, look at the sum of the parts and really start to look at shape. And I feel like shape really helped to dictate what she was doing here. I also loved, and I'm going to widen this up a little bit. There's... Faye's smiling face right there. She also did these really cool earrings, which I loved. And uh, it's kind of like a, a, a wrap type of thing using the two hold uh, Checkmates tiles, the uh, half tile beads, and then the small size 11 seed beads, which are great. And then um, she had extra, so she just did kind of a, a nice um, double wrap and using this fine gauge, the Ceylon. And so the two pieces, they really look different. You can tell by just the change of a button, which is great, or just by the change of the, the well, the leather looks like it's the same, but it's kind of that edge, that bright bead almost gives it that yellow color bead, almost gives the leather kind of a different look. So when you're struggling with creativity, and I'll be really super honest, you guys, I struggle with creativity all the flipping time, for sure. Um, if you just tweak, even just doing simple, something as simple as tweaking the button, that button gives this a whole different personality, right? And, um, you know, also thinking about, well, instead of doing a wide cuff, maybe I'll just ladder, ladder, ladder until my creativity tells me to stop. This is another good way to do it. Someone else in the group, which was great, um, they, uh, she was talking about how she just had a jumble of beads on her desk and she just started um, laddering with them and ladder, 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 and just kind of did a meander down um, the laddering technique. And the piece is super stunning. Um, it's really, really lovely. And it's kind of, you know, a, sort of random, but you know, sometimes you just have to let the beads do the talking. Um, and Ginger, you're asking what Allie used to put this lookbook together. I believe Allie used InDesign because she's a whiz. As she said, Kate, I'm teaching myself in design. Is there anything that woman can't do? No, there is not. <laughs> so that's Faye. So thank you, Faye. This was gorge, just gorgeous. Let's look at Kim's. Now, Kim, I love what you did here. And I know your your guys are both watching. I want to come down to this piece down here, which I thought was super clever. And it's kind of hard to see in the photo, but you uh, you guys will see it a little bit more clearly when you download the um, the uh, the lookbook yourself. She connected these parts here um, 
and I'm guessing you strung these, right, Kim? I think that these are strung, little kind of mini laddered pieces that were connected, it looks like, to our um, coil spacers, and then those coil spacers were connected to our coiled oval jump ring, which looks amazing, I think. And um, I, let me just see. Clamshell, the clamshell end tips. Yes, the nine millimeter. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see that list, though you have it in the book. It's the nine millimeter oval coil jump ring, which is this one here, which is great. And, um, and the coiled spacer and antique copper. And so I love how you did this as a double strand, double strand. And then you went into this double strand, you completely changed the, I don't know, I wanna say the, the personality of this piece by adding, and you can see here, Kim strung the uh, bugles and it looks like the 11 knots back and forth, and then tied, uh, ran alongside the leather here, which I just thought was super clever. So when it's stacked in a wrap like this, it looks like you're wearing four different bracelets, but it's just one long wrap. Someone else in the, I need to make these notes, I think, when I am pr browsing our bead shop group, because there was another wonderful bead shop group member who posted, um, she was wearing her poetry bracelet as a necklace, and again, it was kind of a stack. It was wrapped, and it just really looked nice as a wrap joker. So depending on the length that you do with these guys, you can have them be a bracelet, a stack like this, or they can wrap as a necklace multiple times. Now, this one, what I loved here, uh, and Kim started, she took... Um, the inspiration, some of the inspiration, right from the name of the piece. So Kim says here, and she calls this one meandering, perfect, and it's exactly a meander through using these different beads. So what Kim said here was, building on Janice's garden path got my curiosity stirred, and I wondered, where does that path lead? I wanted to continue the path by adding destinations. You enter along the paver walkway, and discover the flower garden, which is here. Then think peonies, roses, or begonias, and those look exactly like all of those. From there, you'll meander through the stone-lined cobblestone path here to the pond, which is here. Take your time crossing the pond, looks like on those stepping stones right there, and be careful not to slip on the stepping stones. Be sure to pause, toss a penny, and make a wish. Timed properly, you'll be able to watch a golden sunrise, a golden sunset give rise to the silvery moon. And here's the golden sunset ending up in a silver uh, roller bead. Now, I thought this was so charming. So what Kim used as her inspiration was a story, and then she strung the story. I just, it's just clever. You're just a clever girl with that. I love it. So, you know, giving yourself uh, a story to work from, or like what Faye did here was starting with one of her tried and trues, and then kind of doing kind of the, um, a good contrast to that design by making another wrap, but going in a completely different direction with a different color button. So, you know, you kind of flip it back and forth. So it was great, I loved it. So then we've got, I think we've got Danielle coming up next. And if you guys follow Danielle Wicks on our um, bead table group, and I have a uh, uh, an ode to Danielle that's coming up as well. So uh, I'm gonna share that with you in a bit. So what Danielle said for her creativity is, she called this one Bamboo Sticks. And I love that name, A, and we do that a lot here, is sometimes we name the piece beforehand, right? And sometimes we name it after. But giving your piece a name, I think, really 
add some understanding to what's going on with the piece. So bamboo sticks, what Danielle wrote was, the idea for this design began when I laid out all the materials. The bugles caught my eye and reminded me of decorative bamboo mats or the wall hanging at my local yoga studio. I recalled how the bugles were stitched in hard on my sleeve and the design fell into place. And so isn't this, I love the way that this is edged with the half tilas. Just really gorgeous. It has a look of cord here. This was all woven on a bead loom, if I'm not mistaken. I think it is. Maybe it was hand done. I'm I'm going to have to let Danielle judge. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe loomed or it could be stitched. I'll have to ask her and we'll post. Um, but it's just really, I just think it's great. I love the play of colors. I love this single row of the snake beads down the center. center. I love it. Now this one, she called this one stained glass window. And uh, in light of what's been happening in the world with our beautiful uh, Notre Dame being in a bit of distress and thinking about those stained glass windows, those beautiful windows from Notre Dame, um, this is a kind of a very timely design. Um, what uh, Danielle said was, this design actually started out as a variation of peyote stitch, but just didn't work out. I set it aside for a bit while I finished other pieces. After trying again with the loom, she was quite happy with the result. And this really does have a stained glass window effect. I'm going to go a little bit tighter. Sorry, Danielle, I'm cropping out your pretty face. And we're looking at this. And this round glass button, you know, is really a great kind of feels very stained glass window. I also love, can you see what Danielle did here? She made this bracelet adjustable so that you can close it here at this loop or you can close it here in this interior loop. And this is especially, um, especially, um, I think pretty, uh, and it's a nice, it's a nice one for a cuff. But this is, if you're gonna sell your pieces, this is an especially good tip. I love them, love them, love them, love them. Um, okay, so over here, look at what she did. Some earrings. It's uh, the metal uh, seed beads and tilas and some fringe. And just really a fun way to finish up using uh, some of the pieces here. So really, really great job on those, Danielle. And now let's finish up by looking at Allie and some of her um, fun designs. Let me straighten this out. Let me tighten this in. And so what Allie said, she called this one good vibes. And what she said was the colors and selection of materials in this kit drove my desire to create boho flavored pieces. The contrast between the color of the leather and the glass button produced a very eclectic feel. Since the kit had a variety of components, my go-to trails and style was the perfect choice. And indeed, this is kind of, Allie has really adopted that trails and style. So here's multiple strands, multiple strands, coming into a single strand. And that trails end, what she did was with the tilas here, ladder, 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 roller bead, and then that barrel knot or snake knot. Really gorgeous. Um, and that's another way, I think, to gain inspiration. If you're not sure what to do, go right to your go-to. You know, if I don't know what to make at my bench, I'll make a ring because rings are my go-to, right? So I'll start thinking about a ring and then maybe it'll morph into something else, okay? This piece here, this one's called Wild and Free, another boho piece, um, and Allie does a great job with the bibs. And let me show you, I wanna um, kind of really come up tight on this portion right here. Can you guys see what these are? These are roller beads. Can you see this? The roller beads are strung on the leather like this in between and then it looks like Ali used um, clamshell end tips to connect around the leather. But those roller beads kind of hide the clamshell hook 
and that clamshell just blends in right as a bead. Really, really fantastic. Great job uh, for both of these. So really wonderful, um, wonderful work on the lookbook, you guys. And so that brings me to more inspiration. How do you get that inspiration vibe? You know, what I do is, and I'm going to bring this, you guys have seen this book before. I've shared it with you before. I'm going to kind of make this bigger. I'm going to move the camera up a little bit so you guys can see a little more about what I've got going on here. Excuse my computer. I'll move this back a little bit. There we go. You guys can see all the screens. Let me get it a little, sorry, let me get it a little smaller here. There we go. So it's not too distracting. There we go. Really gorgeous, and I hope that you guys um, use these lookbooks as a starting point for your inspiration. Um, what I do um, for my, uh, to help fuel my creativity, because you guys know, I always say this on Free Tip Friday and on Facebook Live, I'll say that I get a lot of ideas in the shower. <laughs> right when I'm standing there the water's pounding on my head and the ideas just pop in I also sometimes uh, get those ideas in the middle of the night so and sometimes I just can't get back to sleep if I don't jot it down so I jot my um, notes down in two places one I use the notes feature on my iPhone because that note I can just email it to myself later um, and then transcribe it somewhere else. So I'll t use that notes feature. I also, this is my second one of these tiny little books, okay? And I keep this tiny book always in my purse. And when I get a, an idea, I will be able to just quickly jot it. I am no artist not like Janice, who is a wonderful watercolorist and stuff. But when I get these ideas, I just write them down. Now I also, sometimes I had, I made a little uh, template, a little ring template, okay? And I cut it out and then I taped it in my book. And so eventually someday I'll untape it and I'll use it. So these, this is just for little ideas that I jot down and you can see it's a fairly new one. I need to fill it with more ideas, but this is the one that I carry around with me all the time. And you know, go treat yourself to uh, a, little, a little book. This is my big book that I carry around with when I take a class, when I teach a class. And there's a quote in here. This is when I took a class over at the Makery with my buddy Francesca. Um, her workshop. I took it uh, from the very talented Charles Luton Brain. And Charles um, was talking about some quotes and things. And so he, uh, there's a quote in here that I wanted to share with you guys. Let me see if I can find it here. Maybe it's here. I was looking at it earlier. Oh, yeah. And this is what I love about teaching classes. Charles said, students ask questions to force my brain to go places it's never been. That's what you guys do. And that is what you guys, um, what you guys do for me, right? And so I love the questions. So a lot of times those questions just simply kind of fuel my creativity. So that's, uh, so I use that a lot. I wanted to, um, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, and so then I just jot. The, these, you can see, it has no rhyme or reason or anything. These are really streams of consciousness. And I have different ones for different things and I just write it down. So having something that is, uh, where you can kind of cradle all your stuff. I've got all of this together, right, like this. And I have some little, like, helpers and little precious things that I want to carry with me. This is a little piece of leather that always uh, inspires me. This is painted by my buddy Cynthia Thornton. We were having a weekend of painting on leather. So Cynthia just painted this little compass thing for me, and I've always... 
I don't know, maybe I want to try and stamp it or do something someday with it. So I just carry that around, right? So I have a little place, all of my repository. Here's another little piece of leather that she painted on. So I like, I like these little memories that kind of jog my memory. I also have some templates. I always carry a circle template with me. I love them. And uh, I always carry uh, a few little uh, pens and some rulers and stuff like that. So when I go uh, to an artistic place, if I'm taking a class, if I'm teaching a class, if I'm going somewhere on a weekend, that's when I take this book with me. So I have a, a few more places to record my thoughts. Now, I am no fancy um, diarist, right? You see now people doing these really beautiful planners and, I don't know, bullet planning or bullet journaling, all kinds of cool stuff. So it's, it's you know, just you do you. Don't worry if your books aren't perfect. Um, it's Mine are, are definitely uh, not perfect. So just you do you with your stuff, okay? So yeah, ginger circles are hard, ginger, it's true. So let me show you where I go from that over there, that book. What I do is when I start to create a piece and maybe Janice can chime in and stuff as well, this is a box directly from my desk. I didn't pretty it up, I didn't uh, sort anything because I wanted you to see this. This is how I develop a design and develop an idea. This has some plastic baggies on on there because I do like to store my project in a baggie. So I just uh, tossed them on here. So when this is done, I'll toss it in a bag. But when I'm creating, this is what creativity looks like, right? I've tossed my tools in here, especially when I'm beading. I've tossed my tools in here. I've tossed my beads in here. And this is a piece that I am working on for a couple of uh, bead shop lives from now. We're doing a little, um, uh, little improve, not improvement, a little uh, update is what I meant to say on the dancer earring. And so it was inspired by Linnea's dancer earring and by um, Danielle Wicks and her wonderful tassel earring that. Um, that she has in our files. So this is, uh, you know, I give myself permission to just mix my beads and maybe some of these beads I won't use. This is something that I rejected. I made a tassel uh, on this, right? And I thought, oh, maybe I'll use a tassel and the tassel never worked out. So that's okay. We're just going to push the tassel aside and I'll use it on another project. Um, but this is how you need to give yourself permission to play around with the beads, right? So don't worry. Don't worry. If it doesn't work out, this right here, this one earring represents about, I don't know, four hours maybe of work and stitching, maybe five. I've cut things apart. I've restitched. So this first one is the one that takes the long time. And I'm still not totally done with it, I don't think. But I've got to be done. The <laughs> deadlines make me want to finish or make me finish, right? So this isn't for free or for a bead shop live this week. It's in two weeks. So you'll see what happens with this, okay? So, yeah, the original dancer, Janice, just um, just uh, linked that over on YouTube. It's a really great project, and so we're going to delve into brick stitch. But this is, creativity, you guys, is messy. And so eventually, when this all comes together, um, I'll sort the beads out, return some of the beads to where they go, and then um, everything will kind of live in a baggie until I'm ready to do it on, on air, okay? So... I wanted to move from there to some of the projects that we've been playing with this week. And I'm going to move over to the website here. Bear with me as I go, because I have all of the projects up. So you guys have seen um, uh, 
in last week's last weekend's newsletter. If you haven't been reading it, go and take a look. Um, Ali uh, designed two really cool pieces for us, uh, based again based on her trails end, and we looked at them. If you if you uh, go to beadshop.com and you click on projects and you click on trails end bracelet set, you will see uh, these two our newest trails end. This one's called Super Bloom. Let me get those things out of the way. Let me get a little tighter in here so you can see it. This guy is called Super Bloom, and then the other colorway is called Nevada Trail. Now, sometimes uh, with these, especially, and I've said it, I'll say it again, and I'll say it again and again, um, these check glass pieces, especially these buttons here, they don't always, um, they're not always in stock. So you will have to uh, do some substituting. Believe me, we are on a notification list. As soon as our manufacturer gets these back into stock, we'll get them back. But these um, buttons, they're just not available right now. So if you, you know, you can go to the buttons, you can sort by color and you know, like Faye did in this piece, right? She didn't have two of these buttons to use. Let me turn this around. She didn't have two of these buttons. So Faye just went to her stash and grabbed this deco, uh, deco-y looking button. And you can see it's darker than what she has here, but it ties in really beautifully with some of the colors in these Checkmates tiles. So, you know, just go for it. You can't always replicate exactly what you're gonna see on the web, okay? So when these guys come back in stock, grab them, but for now, do a substitution, okay? Um, the Trails End is great, so you'll find both of these. This is Super Bloom, and this is uh, Nevada Trail, which is nice. So let me see, I had a couple of questions so Tamara, you were saying, what about those of us whose brains are blank of ideas? I just can't seem to come up with my own designs. So I think what happens there is, uh, and it's Tamara, right? Is that Tamara who did it? Yep, yeah, Tamara. I think you have to learn by doing, and you get more and more, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of like training wheels, right? You aren't born knowing how to ride a bike, right? And so you get a bike, you get a tricycle, right? When you're a kid and it has the three wheels and it's pretty easy to maneuver. Then all of a sudden for your, I think for my sixth birthday, that's when I got my bicycle, right? And there's training wheels on there because I didn't know how to ride that bike, not at all, right? And so I probably had my training wheels on longer than anybody else had, right? So, but it gave me, those training wheels gave me the confidence to ride that bike, ride that bike, ride that bike. And then one day the training wheels, they didn't even come off. I think that they loosened, right? The bolts holding them onto my bike loosened. And so I was riding my bike probably for a long time without those training wheels doing anything for me right? They were just kind of hovering there in the background, making me feel like I was supported, right? Same thing here with designs like this, you guys. Think about these as your training wheels. So Tamara, maybe you're thinking about a design, right? And maybe you look at this and you isolate one of these strands, okay? And so maybe you think, well, I really like the way that these spindle beads look in here, but maybe I'd like more of them, right? So maybe you add more spindles to your piece and then you think maybe these eight millimeter rondelles, maybe they don't really float my boat, okay? So you can kind of start to adapt these patterns and designs so they reflect more of you. And think about what it is in these pieces that really speak to you. And you can also look at the silhouette. Let me turn this this way. You can turn the silhouette, turn this this way. Something like just this pattern, this eight mil, this um, 
five millimeter uh, rondelle and the spindle bead, this would also make a really great earring, right? You can just pull that out as an earring. This would also, if we look at it this way, if I cover it up, and I cover that up, that would also make a great leg for a tassel, right? We could adapt that to a tassel, right? So all of these, uh, these little designs, these little kind of ideas will help, I hope, to inspire you and start taking those training wheels off, right? Start taking them off. So that's a way to do it. Also, start when someone, when we had a brick and mortar store, we'd have customers that came in and they'd walk into the bead store and they'd have their hands behind their backs. And I would go, wait a minute, what's going on here? And so people would come in and they wouldn't touch the beads or they would be kind of afraid to touch the beads. And so people would come up and they'd say, you know, I really want to make something, but I just, I don't know how to begin. Well, my suggestion, if you don't know how to begin or you don't know what you want to make, start with one bead or one thing, right? One motif, one color, one shape, one style, something like that, right? That's how these beads or these pieces came to uh, be born. These are Emily's lantern earrings and aren't these just incredible. I love them so, so much. Um, I So when Emily was making these, we had a lot of phone conversations, right, about these earrings. And Emily was struggling a little bit, not struggling in a bad way, but was just like, I'm not sure where these are going. And so the influence for this piece, these pieces here, were these cube beads that were here. So these cubes were her kind of starting point. And the cube can be kind of hard to use, right? Because it's square, it doesn't, the bead doesn't really flow so much. And so we talked it out, we kept talking it out, talking it out, and finally Emily said, you know what, I'm going to use this cube as my base row, but I'm going to go up and I'm going to go down from it. And so this lantern shape was born. And so Emily took her creativity right from using this bead. I just love these. I need to make another pair of lantern earrings. This is such a perfect summer earring. I love them, love them, love them. And that base row of these cubes, I think, are perfect. I love them. So that's where these, these guys started here. I also brought these guys to the fore. This is the soft flex earring that we did, I don't know, a million years ago. I feel like we did these. But these continue to inspire me. Um, it was a fun project. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, you want something fast and quick. And these also, I don't know, dangly earrings um, would, I don't know, always say spring to me. Um, and so these are really fun. So I want you to think about, I really want you to look at these earrings and I want you to think about um, what these earrings look like to you and then I'll tell you what my inspiration for these. We had just done an episode on soft flex and we had strung on soft flex. And I think we were also kind of had bibs on the brain, okay? And if you look at these earrings, can you see how they're just two mini necklaces that are pulled together? Can you see that? This is just a necklace. If I made this larger on a larger scale, it would look a like a great necklace. I could put this second strand in it and it would be a great layered necklace. All this is are two necklaces scooted down, reduced into an earring. That's it. 
and they're crimped just as I would do a necklace, except they're not on a clasp, they're on a loop, right? So same idea, right? Um, so if you're also struggling with, well, what the heck am I going to do? Maybe take an existing design that you already have and shrink, try and shrink it down into a bracelet or an earring or make it bigger and take it from an earring into a necklace or a bracelet. Okay, does that make sense? So I love these guys. I'm going to, I might wear a pair of these this weekend. I think it's, I think it's good. Um, the other way, and I'm going to have to wrap up in a little bit here, but this is our latest, one of our latest pieces. This evolved from um, Brittany being here and doing kind of an updated Bollywood version and Janice's River Walk, which was what we did in Facebook Live um, last, last week, week before last when Brittany was here. Um, and so for this, you guys saw this for Free Tip Friday, and it's up on the website now. This really came out of, uh, I was holding them in my hand, and my husband Chris said, oh my god, I love these. I love those bracelets. I want one. And so adapting an existing design, our Bollywood, into something for a different person. Chris really isn't our our. Uh, audience for the Bollywood bracelet, but he loved the way he, it looked. So I thought, well, for a guy, I'm going to have to make everything a little bit bigger, a little bit bolder, because Chris has a larger wrist. So we did this Bollywood, um, we did just a simple Bollywood with the Matubo beads and the uh, size 8, um, 0.8 millimeter rather, of the Chinese knotting cord. And then I used the 1.5 millimeter leather underneath. And then I just started to go a little nuts with, uh, on air you saw me start to create this and start adding more, more and more on this piece. So I think when you're starting out on a piece like this, when I started that Free Tip Friday last week, I had no idea that this design was gonna come out. So I think it's just like when you are on a journey, or at least for me, I am not worried about the end result. I know that the steps that I make will eventually get me to that end. So first, choose your materials. Maybe have a vague idea. I had a vague idea that I wanted this to be a bracelet, right? Then I started working in a color palette that I liked. I actually had Chris pull the beads because I knew he would pull something that he'd like and it might be different than what I'd pull. So he pulled the beads. So I had then my next step, I had my beads. And then I consulted the design. I looked at the design and I said, you know, let me see how this is all gonna come together. Let me use elements of that Bollywood, which is here elements of the Tahoe bracelet right here by using those transitions that I have, um, that I uh, crimped there. I even used elements of my own Kate's favorite that I use all the time by just tying the loop closed here. I did that here, tying it. So mixing and matching your different techniques that you have in your arsenal and not worrying about how you're gonna close something. Just take each step in the project as it comes. You're not going to worry about how am I going to clasp this thing until you actually have a thing that you've made to clasp, okay? With the exception sometimes of wrap bracelets, right? You need to decide how you're going to start it, right? I started it with this button, but I had no idea how I was going to finish the loop. It, was I going to macrame it? Was I going to knot it? Whatever I was going to do. So don't worry about that so much. Okay, so take each step as it comes. Don't worry about the outcome, just keep going in the steps. And I see that a lot of you are chatting about multiple projects, um, working on multiple projects at the same time. You know, I am working usually on about three projects uh, at a time as we go. I am working usually on something like this that I still haven't finished from our Bead Shop Live this guy that was here. I'm working on projects 
that I'm, we're moving into the future for live broadcasts. And then I'm also working probably a little further on with just kind of random abstract designs that I'm going to turn into Facebook live broadcasts. So you really need what I do, not you, but what I do is I try and segment, segment them. So I keep things in trays like this. I have a series of also little plastic trays that I keep so that each little project has a home base. So when I am over it, like I'm kind of over this earring right now, when I'm over it, I can move it away. Go away, project. And then when I'm ready to come back, I can pull this tray back in the center and uh, I can move move it back. But, you know, I have to have these multiple projects going on because that's what I'm doing. I'm working through them, okay? So you just have to, uh, I try and segment it. That's what I do here. But I know that some of you like to finish a project um, and go from this project to that project to that project, which is also important, I think. Right. Kim is just saying that's why she got a second macrame board. It's so true. Having multiple boards is the way to go. I just wanted to pull um, these guys in the four. I know that you guys have had, uh, have been seeing these twist beads and our rice beads. Where did the rice beads go? They were here a second ago. There they are. And I wanted to talk just for a moment um, about these guys. These are old, old beads. These beads are probably about 30, well, it doesn't sound very old when I say 30 years, but they're about 30 years old. And, you know, Kara the other day, she came in and she was wearing a bracelet. She had a little twist bead right in the middle of her bracelet. And she said, oh, I made this for my mom years and years ago. Um, and so it's fun when we find a stash of these old beads because the, they're really not that much, I'll be honest, in vogue anymore or in fashion, you know, this twist, um, you just don't see these at the bead shows and stuff anymore. And so I love bringing these old ones back. I just think they're cool. So I love them. We do have a limited supply. Um, and so when they're gone, they'll be gone. But I love getting them out into the world. And I just wanted to show you um, what... Uh, what would fit through these beads? <laughs> my mom's asking where my rings are. Oh, I think they're actually sitting on my desk. I took my rings off to put lotion on my hands, and it felt good not having anything on my fingers, so I left them all off. So don't worry. They're all on my desk. I know I'm not wearing my wedding ring or anything that I've made today, so what are you going to do? So I got some cord. I want to see. I haven't pre-tested it, but I wanted to test this for you guys. This is the 0.5 millimeter, and I wanted to see if it fit, and my feeling, my guess was that it would, and it does. The 0.5 millimeter um, fits in these twist beads in the holes. Um, I don't think any larger of a leather cord would fit, um, but I like to know um, that those guys fit in there. The old beads like this, the holes are really good, and they're finished uh, really with care, so it's a nice... It's a nice bead, and they look great on that 0.5 millimeter. I'm not sure that the rice beads are that way, so let me double check and see if they are, uh, if they fit. I don't think that they will. Yeah, the holes on these guys are a little bit smaller. So something like your Ceylon or um, maybe your 0.4 uh, uh, millimeter. I've got that right here the Chinese knotting cord. Let's see if they fit. They probably would fit on a needle. No, they fit just fine. So you can see those fit just fine on there. And I had a head pin floating around here somewhere. I just wanted to double check for you guys and let you know what wire goes through these in here. This wire for this, yes, on the, but your wire has to be super straight. See how it's a little crookedy? So it's not it's not going on as nicely as I want it, so let me make sure that I straighten this sucker out. Okay, like this. And here, I'm going to straighten that out. There we go. Looks nice. And then, 
Yeah, and Janice is mentioning in the product copy, uh, she does write down what the whole size is. So that's great, so you always know. But sometimes you just can't picture it, right? So these are our, our 22 gauge head pins and they fit on there perfectly, these rice beads. And I know that the twist bead will as well. There it is, fits nicely. And I just got a idea. I had these um, daisy spacers left over, right? The daisy spacer fits on there. And then this rice bead fits on there. And you can see you've got a great little earring or a great little dangle or a great little tassel. Okay, looks good. One of the other things when I'm making uh, an earring like this, if I don't like the way it looks this way, I'll turn it upside down. That's something we used to teach in our earring class. Turn it upside down and take a look and see what, if you like that shape better, right? So that's a little extra. So yeah, look in the, um, in the copy and you'll see the whole sizes um, listed there. I also wanted to pull these to the floor because I haven't used them in a while and they're gonna have to make a reappearance. Um, and so the creativity that I'm struggling with right now um, are working with our dragon scales. I love the dragon scales and we have a couple of projects using them. We did some looming with them. Um, I did some stitching. I did a earring project and stuff with them. I really love them, so I, I need to spend some quality time with these dragon scales. And I brought their counterparts in the O beads. This is Crystal Magenta, this color, and this one is the Crystal Celestian Blue. Um, and what's really nice about, it's hard because I know they're in baggies here. You're seeing the, they kind of have a glare to them. There we go, that's a little bit better. Um, but the cool thing about these check beads is that the coatings that they make, they make them in different shapes and different types of beads, so the coating matches across the board. So I need to, um, I need to uh, kind of play around with these a little bit and see what I come up with. So if you guys have any good ideas, let me know because uh, these need to make through the rounds again. So. What I do when I'm starting to think about a project or something like this is I pull the beads and I let them sit near me. I'm going to I'm going to keep these on my desk for the next couple of weeks and um hopefully some inspiration will be coming along with these. Okay? So, yes, it's it's we'll see we'll see how these come around. So I hope you've enjoyed our little walk down memory lane. Um, I, uh, and I hope that you'll get some good ideas and some tips and some inspiration. I'm going to turn the camera around. Here we go. There I am. There I am. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger. Push that back a little bit, make sure that we're straight. There it is. And so I wanted to share with you, um, I've got the piece here for next week. And this is a piece that Janice, let me turn the, move the camera down a little bit so you guys can see that a little bit better. You can see, this is a piece, this is uh, what Janice has called this piece, Longing, and it's, the project will be up on Tuesday for the Facebook Live on Wednesday. I adore this piece, um, and it really did have a big design evolution through this. And I hope, Janice, that you saved some of the pictures that you were working on with this piece. Um, I would love it if next week you kind of share some of your your info on this. I wish this were one that we were actually doing together because it would be fun to do, but I'm gonna try and interpret it as well as I can. But this is a piece that really um, evolved over time with Janice. And again, um, I hope you have those photos. I think you do, I must have one 
um, that I can kind of show you where it went. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous necklace. We have a lot of chain. We're going to talk about using chain. We're going to talk about really fine wire wrapping um, and layering and um, play around with how, uh, look at how perfectly, can you see that? How perfectly um, layered uh, this piece is, that it's the graduations from strand to strand are just perfect. And so we're going to talk about that as well, how to make a graduated piece look just perfect as well. So this is what we've got going on for next week. We've got a new clasp that's coming. I know you can't see it very well from there, but I'll give you a little peek. We've got a new clasp. And these are some of our new chains that are going to be debuting next week. They're not on the website yet. But it's going to be a fun, I think, uh, walk through uh, wire and chain and wire wrapping. And we'll also um, talk about graduating strands. We'll talk about cutting chain. We'll also talk about how a design idea evolves from um, one concept to another and when it's time to... Um, you know, ditch that idea and move on, move forward. So it was great. This is going to be a lot of fun. So we'll have that up for next week. And then we'll follow with that earring uh, project that uh, is going to come the week after. Well, you guys, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on this Friday here for Free Tip Friday. It's always fun to spend time with you guys. Check your emails this weekend. Right now we're having our huge spring sale that's going on, and we've got some fun things coming up in the newsletter for you this weekend that you're not going to want to miss. So if you're new to us here at beadshop.com, go to our website, sign up on the newsletter. We keep it all private. You can also find all of the projects, all of the products for these projects on there as well. Have a wonderful, restful, joyous weekend with your family, with your chosen family, with you and your solitude, however you wish to spend it. And I'll see you next week for Bead Shop Live. Thanks so much. Talk to you guys soon.